sort of I'll tell you when. Five, four, three, two, one. Go Nick. Well, ladies and gents, sorry about the little bit of a delay we had there. We had some technical issues, all down to Mrs. Brown. He's got one job and he can't do it right any week that we bring him. <laughs> I can't believe it. Okay, so welcome to the Talk and Talk Show. It is, of course, Monday night. You are here with me, myself, and, of course, Paul Dickkiss. Good evening, all. Mrs. Brown. <laughs> and the legend that is Gary McSheffrey. Woo! Woo, 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 woo. Why up? Yeah. <laughs> Good, thing. thank you, yourselves. <laughs> okay, at the start of the show, as you all know, we uh, we get the sad bits out of the way. Not out of the way, but I'm sure you know what I mean. And um, this week, we want to pay respects to uh, Dean Smith. Uh, his dad sadly passed away uh, last week. And even though they're our biggest rivals, and normally I wouldn't talk about them whatsoever, things like this are more important than football. This is a, a man's dad, and I was horrified to see some of the messages that were that were sent out last week. So, uh, Dean Smith, best wishes, and uh, much love from everybody connected with the right side of Birmingham City Football Club. And uh, some more sad news. Paul Devlin's uncle Mick sadly passed away on Saturday evening. Uh, Mick took Paul to his first ever Blues game and made him into a Blues fan. Now, Paul, as you know, is a massive friend of the show and he, he may be listening tonight. And Paul, our hearts are, are with you. Also with you. And uh, I don't know, we have no words, mate. We're sorry. No. That's right. Awful, awful, awful. Yeah. <sighs> Horrible, horrible. But anyway, okay. So the season is set to resume then on the twentieth of June, provisionally so far, and uh, it's going to be behind closed doors. Nobody going to be there. No fans there. It's going to be weird. But you know what? I think it's right that we do finish the season. The season. I think it's absolutely bang right that we finish it and get it get it done uh, for the credibility, not only for the Premier League but also for the Championship as well. And no disrespect for those that are, you know going to going to lose their place in the Championship. And those that are going to come up from League One. So mm. I think it's right that we do it. Yep. Yeah. Right. Greetings, Gary. It's nice to have you with us. Thanks for sharing your time with us tonight, matey. No worries. No worries. How are you? You right? Yeah, we're all right. You're all right. Uh, born in Coventry. Yeah. Walsgrave Hospital. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> see, man of knowledge. Man of knowledge. <laughs> man of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Not right, and you, you also was a Coventry fan as a kid and played for Coventry and of course I played for the Blues as well played for Coventry twice was it? yeah two occasions yeah so left yeah what was left, it like played there for about 10 what was it like going back? Um, it was it was it was alright it was good I, you know I, I liked I liked going back and obviously <clears throat> Didn't like getting relegated with with the club. That that was a a downside of my of my career. But um, but no, it was it was it was good to go back because needed to needed to be able be somewhere where um, I don't know. I was appreciated and just getting confidence back of it because the, the the latter part of my Blues career probably you know I didn't didn't play as as much as I wanted to. Didn't play as well as I'd I'd wanted to. Ultimately, it's probably why I didn't play as much as I wanted to. So um, it was it was good to go back and just feel, you know, feel the love again, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get that. I get that. Um, so, what part of Coventry did you come from? Uh, so I come from. I was I was raised in Hillfields, uh, literally. Oh, nice. Part uh, Stoke, of that. Stoke and Hillfields, literally, um, where the old old ground was, Highfield Road, literally two hundred mm -hmm. yards from the stadium. Yeah, so I used yeah, to work always, working when I was younger. Yeah. Ty, uh, Ty Lil. I used to work in Ty Lil. Oh, I know Ty Lil. Yeah, I know it well. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know the I know old style. Well, yeah. Oh. yeah. And uh, it's whoever all... designed the ring right there once, uh, well, once. Oh, that famous <laughs> ringway. Oh, my life have I been caught on that a few times, yeah. you just got to know it. you just yeah. got to know it, just got to know it, yeah, know yeah, it. yeah. There are people still uh, on oh, it now. Oh, oh. Sorry, Chris. There are people still on it now from 1968. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the mini eight fifty. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, we've been uh, we've been asking Gary uh, throughout the course of the week for uh, our viewers and listeners to send in questions for you. Paul, have you got any uh, right now? Um, almost. <laughs> Come on, prepare, prepare. 
I just want to say, though, we've just had a really good early comment coming from um, from Jason Hughes. He's just said that he feels sorry for the fans that haven't missed a game, home and away, for years and years, which is a great, a great comment. Absolutely, yeah, I totally agree with that sentiment, that. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, Much not going to be easy. No, not, not at all. Not ideal, then... but as you say, as you say, if it's, if it's the only way that the season's going to continue and finish, then, you know, just going to have to get on with it and hope that, that hope that you can get in as soon as possible during the next season, you know? Mm. Mm. I can't see yeah. it till Christmas. No. I don't no. think it'll be till Christmas. This hour. I don't think, I don't I, think so. No. And what we've got to watch out now is uh, obviously with the government uh, releasing the lockdown this week. I, I mean, like, Townie has been absolutely mental today. It's been like a, like a normal Saturday, to be perfect, honestly, yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, I've accused to get stuff this morning were just horrendous. Uh, and I, I, I personally believe the second wave will come. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised either, to be honest. Um, I mean, do you think we're do you think we're lifting things a bit too soon, or what, what are your thoughts, Nick? Do I think that what? Sorry, and Gary, as well. Yeah, well, Gary, what do you think? Do you think we're bringing football back too soon, or do you think it's the right time? Um, I think if I think for what they've for what they've lifted in recent weeks, I think as long as um, as long as it is safe and if you think of the size of a stadium and, and, and if they're limiting the amounts to, to, to low numbers, then mm. as you said, you've seen town today and it's it's heaving as you, it's heaving like a Saturday. Yeah. Mm. You know, apart from as long as the players are tested regularly and have no symptoms and you know, I think that they're obviously going to be the closest to each other out on the pitch, you know, in, in, in the whole whole stadium. So it's probably not going to be as, as dangerous as walking into Tesco, you know what I mean, hopefully. No, no, no. I mean, it is it is pretty awful to watch. I mean, have you seen any German football at all? It's been terrible to watch. I've watched a few, yeah. It's, I've watched yeah. a few games, yeah, I mean. <laughs> not one. I mean, but what they do, what they have been saying, though, is the, the actual ball, the ball, the ball being in play has been longer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I'm getting a, oh. a FaceTime here. Oh, you're gone. <laughs> you're, back. back. you're back. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, the ball's been in play much longer, you know, because obviously you've not got the ball going into the into the fans. You've not got people play acting for the fans. So no. they've said that, they're, they're, that it's probably average an extra 10, 15 minutes of actual tight ball play on the pitch. So the lads, the lads are probably going to feel it in terms of fitness, you know, getting themselves yeah. back to back to the level and. It's going to be good that that it's. I think it's good that there's a couple of extra subs in there, you know, to get everyone up to speed. It's yeah. been so you can rotate the squad. Training ground. It's just all smiles everywhere. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it must be great for the lads to be back out there and amongst each other again. You know, even though it is at a distance and they're only training in small groups. You know, it must be great for them to be back. You know, going to training ground to training every day. Yeah, it would be. I mean, I can I can only imagine if it was. If I was still playing, like then yeah, the the release of just getting out there and having a kick about, you know, even if it's yeah. even if it's not really um, structured training session of, you know, what you know you're normally preparing for a certain team, or how can you exploit their weaknesses? Listen, just a kick about two or three years on a on a decent pitch, back like you say with the uh, with the balls out and that and, and the goals in front, yeah, getting a goalkeeper in, it's just. Yeah, they must, they must be they must be buzzing just to be back and having having a kick about and a run around. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We've got some questions from um, some of our fans and some of our viewers as well. Um, so, first question is: Stephen Gill has asked, "Who was your favourite footballer growing up?" Favourite footballer growing up. Um, when I was when I was really young, when I was really young, I used to love uh, Liverpool as well. It's half and. Uh, I used to love um, Robbie Fowler. You know, he was he was top draw. I thought he was unreal. Yeah. And then obviously, then uh, Michael Owen bounced on the scene when I was like a teenager as well. And uh, yeah. he, he was unbelievable. Then at Coventry, it was the likes of um, Peter Runlove and Darren Huckabee. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, them two Them two were top draw. And yeah. They were the sort of players I always tried to tried to be like. Mm -hmm. Would you, you disappoint when he signed for us then, Peter Runlove? Because I was surprised we got him. <laughs> um, Who's got no, the ice cream van? Not really. I, I, 
I think uh, I think Coventry was always like that. Coventry was always had decent players for a couple of years, and then they, they yeah. moved on. So yeah, we, we just just got on with it. Just got on with it. But I'm, I, I imagine at the time I was, but got yeah. over it. <laughs> Okay, um, and, and Stuart Morris has said, what was your favourite moment in a blue shirt? Um, favourite moment in a blue shirt? Well, I think probably probably getting a hat-trick against Preston at home when it was yeah. the top of the table clash was good. Yeah. And then I remember, I think I've seen back recently clips on YouTube, I remember that uh, Wolves away game when we won 3-2 mm. and... Oh, beautiful! You know, it was big, big, big game. Uh, Beat Doyle goals. had a great game and goal. And uh, yeah, saved the penalty. That, didn't that, they? Yeah, that was a, yeah. yeah, saved the pen. That was um, that was a good moment. You could you could just see. You kind of like forget the emotion of it, but you could see when he saved that pen, and the final whistle went. You just we just felt like, although we made it difficult for ourselves, felt like that win was the one you know that almost almost got us over the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the Newcastle one springs to my mind as well. 5-1 away in the cup. That was special, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a good night. Really good night. Um, it was a strange one. Strange one because obviously we, we kind of like snuck a replay, didn't we? I think... Yeah. Did Seb, did, did Seb get an equaliser late on in the home game? I think he did. Yeah, um, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, <clears throat> went up there and it was, it was, it was strange because it was just quite easy it, 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 everything clicked together and we just cruised it you know and uh yeah. we was we was clinical in our finishing but it could have been could have been more as well you know it could have been yeah could have been embarrassing for them really 5-1 yeah. was embarrassing enough but we, we could have scored a lot more yeah 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 I mean Jason Hughes did ask actually how good was the 5-1 v Newcastle in the cup was it your best away game for, for Blues I mean obviously you just mentioned Wolves but um, it, probably, yeah. They, obviously, they were they yeah. were Premier League. They were Premier League opposition, weren't they? But then, but then we went to uh, when I scored my first goal in the Prem. We beat Tottenham away three two. Yeah, uh, Seb, got, Seb got a screamer that day. Yeah, uh, yeah Cameron right, scored and right, myself right. and myself. And that yeah. was a good win, good performance. Uh, I think that was that was first game. Yeah, that was his first, first, first game. game. Yeah. So that was a good performance. There were some good performances. There were some good away wins in the when we went on about a thirteen game and beat and win and uh, and beat and run under Brucey. We I think there was a few big away wins there. Derby County, Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. Um quite a lot, quite a lot to remember, but there was there were some good away days. Mm. Yeah, we had, we had I mean we had a good side then, didn't we? Nicholas Bedner on loan up front and obviously Larson and Moamba in midfield and yourself oh, great side, on the left. Yeah. Great side. And um in the middle yeah, we no, we did. Yeah. We, we in did the middle with Moamba we had Clemens, didn't we? And then up front we had Cameron Jerome and uh, obviously Bedner. And then Bedner, the back four DJ, back four would have been yeah, yeah, Stephen Kelly. Stephen Kelly right back. Stephen Kelly was right back, Sads was left back, mm. uh Jaidi, Martin Taylor, and yeah. Gotti. You know, yeah. it was always two two out of Matty Upson. It was two out of them, two out of them four, really. Yeah, yeah. And, and Mike in nets were only Mike Taylor. Great side that was. Um, okay, so um... uh, Paul, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go, go on, on, mate. Go on. Are you, uh, are you have you got that written down, or are you just remembering it again? What's that? <laughs> all, that in... <laughs> oh, all the information. No, no, I just remember it, mate. I'm not Gary, like, he's got um... he's got such a memory. Gary, he makes us sick. <laughs> <laughs> I Gary, will I, will, I will I get slated? Will I get slated, Gary, if I put this on the Coventry City fans forum? I just want to know before I do it. <laughs> I don't know, mate. I don't know. Test. Hey, you only live once. Back on. <laughs> oh, I'm they're, doing they're it anyway. Our, they're sharing our stadium, so they might as well share our talk show. Yeah, as well. it's it's on now. It's on now. Get prepared. Get prepared, everybody. Welcome, and, uh, to Gary. Gary, Street. sorry, sorry, Nick. Sorry, go on, mate. Go on, Nick. Well, everybody from Coventry, sorry we knocked you out of the court. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, uh, Gary, look us through eight Smash and grab, wasn't it? It was yeah. smash and grab. It was, yeah. It was, yeah. It was. <laughs> it was. Talk, talk um, us how you came to be a Blues player, Gary. Sorry? Talk us through how you came to be a Blues player. Um, I was doing pre-season with Coventry in, um, I think we were in Portland. We, had, we went to America for like 10 days. And mm. Mickey Adams... Called me, said Bruce had uh, called in, offered some money to to buy me, and he just 
told him where to go in a polite way and uh, <clears throat> that was that. I had a little chat about it, didn't hear anything myself and uh, then obviously then obviously, over the next couple of weeks, uh, my agent had a few calls from Steve Bruce, Eric Black. Uh, I can't remember who the can't remember who the head of recruitment was back then. But um, spoke to them a couple of times, and yeah, Bruce, you know, Bruce, he kept up in the money, he kept up in the offer, and it, it lasted about four weeks, to be honest, because uh, mm -hmm. I come, I think I'd done two or three games. I did three games at Coventry, didn't I? So. I literally come and uh, I think my first game was car. I think it was, I don't know if it was Cardiff away or it was a home, a home game, two two draw at home. I think, um, but yeah, so it, it it was three or four weeks in in the, in the making, and eventually Coventry got it's an offer they couldn't really refuse to be honest. And and for me personally, I, I when we were talking about the squad, the squad that I would be joining, it was a. Uh, Although it was in the same division, it, it was definitely a step a step up for me because the the previous season I actually turned down going to Reading, and uh, you know I looked at it as a sideways movement because it was just a very similar similar club, you know, Coventry and Reading finished in similar air position in the league, you know, always there or thereabouts, knocking on the playoff door, was not mm -hmm. quite making it. So I, I thought, well, there's no point, but then. Reading went up. It's the season they got 106 points, and uh, that team <laughs> stuck together for a few for a few years, and uh, they're doing really well. Stayed in the Prem for a few years. So when it when it come again the season after, and it was a club like Birmingham, a manager like Steve Bruce, it was it was difficult to um, it was difficult to not take serious and turn down. Mm. 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 And uh, and um, Daniel Ricketts is asking, who was your favourite player to play alongside for us? Uh, um, just trying to think. Uh, play alongside, as in anywhere on the pitch or in the attacking areas. Yeah, well, I, I guess who who kind of like you know uh, you enjoy playing with the most, obviously. So that would probably be, you know, who sort of you know who did you sort of uh, team up with best? I suppose, isn't it? Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I just think that I, I just think that team gelled gelled quite well. Um, mm -hmm. In, individually, there were some excellent players, but collectively, I think uh, I always say Stephen Clements is probably the best player I played with in my career mm -hmm. because that that season he um, he weren't in a team for a while when I first come, and I I obviously seen growing up I seen him play for Spurs, and, that, and I'm thinking why ain't, why ain't Stephen Clements in this team? Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I think I, Bruce had a Bruce had a right a right pop at him one game after. After uh, after a league cup game, because Clem Clem got a game, I think it was in a league in a league cup game uh, when he rested a few out of the league, and uh, they had a they had a they had a proper like go at each other, you know, in the changing room, and uh, yes. Brucey accused him of being a little bit soft, pulling out of a challenge or something, and it really got to Clem. Clem's Clem was like, I've never pulled out of a challenge in my life, you know, and I've, I basically I'd run through a brick wall for you, and. Uh, that was since he got his he got his hair up with that. Honestly, he put him in the team in a league game a few games later, didn't he? It might have been yeah. that derby away, wasn't it? Derby away, yeah, and he yeah, got the winner, got the goal. Yeah. And ever ever since that game, I think he that's he just he he carried he led that team. He carried that you know got it, took games by the scruff of the neck and really really led us over the line that year. And for that, I always said that. He's probably the best player I've played with, and you know, a real a real leader. Yeah, 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 definitely. And then to we go, had Andy. Oh, sorry, go on. Go on. No, you're right, Pub. Go on, Nick. I was going to. I was going to go we had Andy. games unbeaten in the Premier League. I mean, like we were we were dizzy, weren't we, Paul? We were like <laughs> our heads were spinning. We'd never known this before. It was like, wow, wow, this is just incredible. <clears throat> what was it like as a player? Um, it was in the champ. It was in the championship, wasn't it? Yeah, I think um, Nick's about McLeish. Yeah, he's thinking about McLeish in his time when he did. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the, the the 13 and B and I was on about was obviously in the Bruce in the championship. But yeah, he, we were going into game. We were going into games just just that weight off the shoulder. That first win. Once we got that win and the weight was off the shoulder, it was just like going into games, just knowing. I mean, we rode our luck a bit at times, but mm. we just knew we had we had the firepower. We had the we had the defenders to to keep it locked in at the back, you know, at the back, and uh, 
we had the firepower to score goals and we had midfielders that would get up and down and, and good on the ball. So it was, it was just a good good balance. It was really good to play in. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, we draw we draw some similarities with Coventry City, actually, really. Um, not obviously pitch-wise or something and over like that, but like... You know, we've 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 been there. We've had the the dizzy heights of the Premier League, and, and we were doing very well. And then all of a sudden, we win that Carling Cup, and three or four weeks later, we're relegated and mm. own a prison. And, and right, it's just been a it's just been a from a fan's point of view, a murderous sort of ten years, really. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah was, I mean, I, I remember le- I remember leaving, and obviously they won the cup. The the season after I left and I was watching it and playing with all the players, it was, it was, I was so happy for them, but, you know, on a personal level, it was hurting a bit, you know, thinking, you know, why, why, why aren't I there with them? But yeah. I, it was, it's, it's a strange one. It's a strange one, how, how it has happened and how they've not been knocking on the door at all, you know, in, in recent years. Cause when I went there, they, they had their few years in the Prem where they were, they had some top players and, good team and then they come down went up come down so it was if anything we were called a yo-yo club weren't we at yeah, my time yeah. we were like a yo-yo club because <clears throat> yeah. too good for the champ mm. some some seasons comfortable in the prem but then on the bad seasons not good enough and but then you, you always just fancied as a bit of a bit of recruitment some good recruitment from bruce or whoever and then bounce straight back up but at the minute it's just at the minute it's just not really got that um I don't know. I think I think I think the bu- I think everything's changed and it? it's everything's moved on. The budgets have moved on, haven't they? The salaries have moved on in the championship, and for what pe- what some clubs are paying now, I don't think I don't think Blues can compete at the minute with you know the top boys in the champ of what they're paying. You know, we know what we are and we know where we are. We, as fans, we know that. Uh, but it ends off sad. It, it, you know, I mean, look. It's a name, isn't it? Birmingham, the second biggest city in the country. There's not a football team called London. I've said that many times before. We're the second biggest city. And, uh, you know, we should be right bang up there. Should be. Yeah, it will come. It'll come. I'm sure it will come good again because, you know, listen, the players are out there. Especially I'm now. Out. Especially now in this um, current climate, you'll probably get you'll probably get a lot of good players that you probably get them for half the price you'd have got them six months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, some of them are going to be without a club, and they're, they're, the clubs are the clubs are losing out on a lot of revenue, as we know. So they're not going to be in a position to be saying, "Look, I want twenty grand a week." You're going to have to go. Mm-hmm. Well, look, we've got we've got we've got ten for you there. Take it or leave it. Mm. I'm sure they, I'm sure there's going to be some good players out there. You know, ready to ready to. Ready to, to play for Birmingham City. I am blessed, yeah. honestly, because, because since 1982, am hmm. I allowed to mention that date? <laughs> since 1982, we've been up, we've been down, we've had cup runs, we've had we've won trophies, three that I've, I've I've been and seen, one that I stood there with my three sons at against Arsenal when we took the League Cup. And you know what? There's nothing like being a Birmingham City fan, nothing on this earth. It is, and I've got goosebumps, mate, honestly. I, I just, I just love it. Can't wait. I can't wait to get back and see everybody again. Man, no, I, must admit, no. I must admit, one of the things that, um, when obviously when I was growing up with Cov, <clears throat> Coventry had a spell of like 20, 25, 20, 30 seasons in the Premier League, didn't in a top yeah, division, yeah, yeah. didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, uh, yeah. I remember playing. I remember Blues coming to Highfield Road. I think <clears throat> it might have been a, might have been a cup game, or it was one of the first seasons Coventry got. Um, <laughs> relegated and um we, but we, i didn't grow up playing against each other a lot do you know what i mean I played against the obviously the the youth teams for cover for the cov academy and stuff but i didn't really know what i was going into i'll be honest with you i was i was a little bit naive and uh but once i got into st andrews and honestly got that buzz of it was like playing in a cauldron it was unbelievable and i, mm-hmm. I can imagine for the team that we had and the form we were in it mustn't have been nice for teams to come and play because no. we had them. We had them beat. We had them beat in the. We had them beat in the tunnel. I'm telling you. We we. Yeah. Had, yeah. You'd you'd look at them and I'd look at the team that you know. I'd I'd always be of our Q and I'd look at our team and I'd think proper, mm. proper group of men. Do you know what I mean? Proper pride that played at top level. Some. I mean, we we had 
we had players that scored in World Cups in the team, you know, and uh, yeah, yeah, we just we just knew. But like I say, the the atmosphere was that season. The atmosphere was unreal. Do you remember really the Sheffield was. Wednesday game, Gary? The Sheffield Wednesday game that was incredible, wasn't it? When we when we more or less cemented. I mean, that was the yeah, actual game yeah. confirmed promotion, wasn't it? Well, it what it was it was, but we couldn't celebrate it because it was the next day. Derby lost at Palace away, didn't they on on That's TV? It. That yes. Was it. So it was. It, that's that's when we got promoted, but it was like, it was a weird one because we were all at home, just like ringing each other, and then I will <laughs> go out for a few beers, and then the next day we obviously went to the training ground and, and we celebrated as a team. But you know, we it would have been nice to do it out there on the pitch, you know. But go Seb Larson's goal, Seb Larson's goal in that game, Gary was just oh, remember that, yeah. Unreal, mate. Unreal. Um, he got better and better that season. I mean, I remember. I remember the first half of the season being on being on fire really myself and getting all the goals and yeah and assist Seb was always consistent in his performance he chipped in with a few goals and assists but god he finished he finished that he finished that season so strong you know yeah. uh, probably yeah. from, probably from about <clears throat> my goals dried up you know second half of the season I was still assisting quite a lot but Seb stepped up and, you know, Seb ended up with about nine or ten goals. Bentner got ten goals, I think. Cameron Jerome got ten or eleven. DJ Campbell stepped up with, you know, nine yeah. or ten as well. So, Jaidi, Jaidi got six or seven. So, but but Seb finished that season so, so strong and he's, he's some of his goals and the pace. Yeah. I don't know where he got that, don't know where he got that pace from for that goal, but it was the quickest <laughs> I've ever seen it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and... Um... What was your favourite goal for us? Um, oh, geez. If you could go back and relive one of them. Which one would it be, and why? And I think, I think my, I think my favourite in terms of <clears throat> the quality of the goal. I think West Brom at home when we won two 0 and I scored both. Yeah. The sec, the second one where I dribbled through and I dinked the keeper yep. with my right yep. foot. Um, I think that was probably the probably the best one in terms of quality but there was a few good free kicks that I enjoyed West yep. Brom again a couple against good goal against Wolves um, yeah and then <laughs> I remember him well. obviously always I always although it was a pen I always remember my first goal at, in the Premier League that was a top I mean that win at Wild Lane yeah yep. it was oh, again yeah. sorry Nick who was that again who was what your first goal in the Premier League? Uh, it was at Tottenham. It was at Tottenham. Paul Robinson in goal. Mm. Oh, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a couple, if it's okay, a couple more questions. Just a couple of last questions from our viewers. Um, so, da -da 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 -da. Richard Clark is asking, do you wish you were playing now in this era, in today's, in today's era? Yeah. I mean, yes. You want to play for as long as you can. It would have been, it, it would have been great. Yeah. Um, um, I'd love to, yeah. I think, I think, what a time to be a professional footballer now, to be a good young player now. To, yeah. I mean, the mo the money's gone insane, isn't it? The money's, the money's crazy. Gone insane. The money's crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think every you, you, whoever you speak to, every era, every era would probably say, "Bloody hell! If I'd have played in this era, I'd be, I'd be this, I'd be that." So yeah, yeah, yeah. It would, it would be, it'd be great to to keep yeah. playing in in today's game, but. You know, I've had, I've had my time, so... Yeah, yeah, else. yeah. Hmm. And finally, a uh, regular viewer of ours, Mark Andrew Adams has asked, what, and also working for the NHS as well, Mark, at the moment, or, or always has done, um, what, memento, what mementos have you kept from your time at Blues? And, and your auntie Mary chats to, him about, chats to him about football on the bus. Auntie <laughs> 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 um, Mary. Um, <laughs> That's quality. That is pure... <laughs> yeah. Uh, so momentum's basically yeah. Well, I've got um, that promotion season. I've got the, I've got the home shirt, the away shirt, and the medal in the middle. I've got that framed uh, yeah. up on the wall. So that's that's probably my proudest thing. Um, I've got uh, still got the match ball from the Preston game. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere the kids probably play with that in the garden. Uh, <laughs> No, but yeah, just I've, I've got the shirts. I've got each. I've got each each shirt that we had. Each shirt that I wore. Um, I always I always keep one. 
I would yeah. try and keep one and uh, give a few away over the years. But, but no, they're, they're, the, they're the momentum you keep, really. Yeah, yeah. He lives in Coventry as well, Mark does. Yeah, yeah Mark Andrade lives in Coventry as well, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yes, probably why he bumped into your answer, yeah. <laughs> he is the Coventry one. Yeah, the Coventry one. The Coventry one. Free the Coventry one. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mark, good work with the NHS, my good friend. You're doing a sterling job. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, Gary, fun. Gary, when, when was your last game playing football ever? And who was it for? Ever? Yeah. Um, professional. Well, I had a game. Oh, professional. Yes, yeah, yeah. so professional. Yeah. My, my last professional game was um, Grimsby. So my last professional club was Grimsby Town. Literally right. two years ago. Literally two years ago now. So a couple of seasons back. Right. Okay. Okay. So, I yeah, took my. I went there. We played Grimsby in. I think it was January one year. Uh, Grimsby away. Took took my ex-wife. Well, I, I, right, I was at work, yeah. And uh, so, so I'm, go, right, I'm going to the Blues tomorrow, playing at Grimsby. And uh, one of the lads that I work with, oh, it's a beautiful seaside town, that, Jilly was going, oh, you want to take your kids and yourself there? And I was, like, laughing. And she goes, oh, yeah, OK, we'll come, we'll come. Never seen such a gale blowing all your life. They sat in the car for two and a half hours while I went to the match. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. When, it, when the weather's bad in Grimsby, the weather's bad in Grimsby. There's nothing open whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, it can get couple windy. Of, can get windy there. Can, yeah. Couple of questions for me, Gary. For me, um, I ask every yeah. every one of our guests. I ask these questions. So, you said four years you was with us, wasn't you? Four years. Yeah, four years. So, in that four years, who was the best trainer, the worst trainer, and the best dresser, and the worst dresser? <laughs> um, best <laughs> trainer. Um. God. You can't say yourself. I'd, I'd probably say, I'd probably say when once Stephen Carr come, I think that was my second season. Yeah, probably the third third season maybe. Um, yeah. yeah, he come in the champ season, didn't he? The, the third season. Oh eight oh um, oh eight nine season. Yeah, oh eight oh nine yeah. season. I, I think Carr. it was that. Yeah. So he he was tra- he, he was an unbelievable trainer. Um, yeah. He always seemed to be up against me because like right back against left wing and. Yeah, I I used to, I used to train well, and uh, he used to get the best out of me. But he was so hard; he was so hard to like to beat in anything. Yeah. Strength, pace, football. Yeah, he, he had the lot, mate. He had the lot. Um, he was a great player, wasn't he? Yes, worst trainer, worst trainer. Um, <laughs> can't really think. Can't really think. Worst dress. Worst dresser was definitely Bentner, though. Nick Nicholas Bentner, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he used to think it was top top gear but it was like he used to come in he used to come in with a juicy tracksuit and ug boots on stuff like that <laughs> and you know obviously obviously everything's got a bit more diverse now hasn't it but back yeah. then it was a little bit back then it, it was a bit suspect wasn't it we were like bloody hell Nicholas you got your missus's gear on or what and, uh, <laughs> we got to get him on we got to get him on he, he was uh, he was he was just crack. He just crack us up. He was just like, "Listen, you'll all be you'll all be wearing this in a year. You'll all be wearing it, setting trends." I'm like, "I won't be wearing that in a year, mate." But <laughs> uh, he's definitely the worst dress. And who would you he's say was the most dapper? It was the it was the best dresser. Um, dapper. There was a few. <clears throat> there was a few smart ones. Leon Ridgewell was always he always had a good go. He always had a really good go. Lived basically lived in Harvey Nicks. He did. <laughs> yeah and is there any good stories you can tell us like uh, any pranks or anything you can tell us on here about any 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 sort of uh, funny stories or pranks that have gone on that won't have any repercussions or get, um, you, in, or get you in trouble <laughs> <laughs> nah not there's none that there's none that won't get me in trouble um, <laughs> so so I can't really but but nothing nothing really sticks out to be honest nothing sticks out I can't really can't remember that much uh, but no, the ones that would have, would stick out would get people in trouble. So, <laughs> <coughs> Gary, are you still in touch with Stevie Carr? Uh, no, not really. Not really. Um, no, nah, not really in touch with with a lot. To be honest, I mean, I keep in touch with uh, a few of the lads, uh, Neil Dans, <coughs> Rowan yep. Vine now again. I always have a little text with Clem now and again. Um, 
who else Stuart Parnaby there's, there's there's a few there's a few that I keep in touch with a little bit but it's 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 not as often as we we should and I'd like to to be honest do you know what I mean but it just happens doesn't it? everyone everyone kind of moves on and okay, so since family you, and, your football your professional football career finished uh, what what is it you do now so now I'm um, now I'm coaching at Doncaster Rovers uh-huh um I, I went in there and I took a I went in there took a role as assistant 18s coach two summers ago um basically I was training with on pre-season keeping fit doing a little bit of coaching I weren't listen I was just just in the door I was a novice I didn't really know how to coach but you know took took to it well and, and um when when then I when I when I wasn't getting a club and my career was really you know at, at an end um I stuck to the coaching and been there since. So now I'm now on this last season. I've done the before the COVID stopped the season. I was doing the um, under twenty threes, and also still doing doing my eighteen role as well. So mixing the two together, really. But yeah, mm-hmm. I've been a coach since. So I just fell on my lap, really, and didn't really. The transition was quite smooth because I was still doing the day to day routine. Um, did I really want to retire? No, I didn't want want to really go out that way, but. You know, stuff happens. You just got to get on with it and move on and look forward to the next thing. So, you know, mm. I'm, I'm I'm enjoying the coaching. Mm. I don't think anyone wants to retire, do they? <laughs> no, no. We're getting <laughs> close. Chris, you're getting close to me, Chris. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the question that I've been waiting all night to appear is regarding that Mohican haircut. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who did it? Uh, Rowan Vine did it. Ah. Now, Mark Andrews said, said it was him as well, yeah. Okay, so we got him to blame for yeah. it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Viney was Viney was staying with me for a bit when he come from uh, Luton and I let him stay at my house, and uh, he was there for months. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> just got just got bored one night, and I just needed a trim, so thought, right, we'll go for it, and I let him let him loose on it, and you know. <laughs> Looking, I look back now. I think, what what was that? But at the time, I thought he'd done a good job. Yeah, I thought it was we... pretty cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I think We've... of you playing for Blues, now I always think of that Mohican. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I had that that Wolves game, didn't I? Yeah. 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 yeah definitely brought good luck there, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you make of today's team, Gary? Are you watching much of Blues nowadays? Uh, so I watched I watched them quite a lot. Uh, last season, yeah, obviously, it's, um, did, did quite a few games on Blues TV, um, yeah. and I thought I just always thought they were robust, hard to beat, uh, grinded, grinded results out. Yeah, I, I I always felt they needed more creativity in midfield. Yeah, and uh, I felt the wingers were too inconsistent. Good on mm. their day, good on their day, but like when. You know, when you say, look at today's and I look at our group and I just talked about, I had 17 goals and Seb Larson had 12. If you yeah. had that from, if Blues had that from the wing today, they'd be going yeah. for, they'd, they'd be getting sold for 15 million. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I, I used to look at that as like the norm from a, from an attacking midfielder. And yeah, it's almost accepted now that it's acceptable to get like five goals and, I don't. It's it's a strange one. I just felt that this year again. I just think they're. I think they're good at grinding things out. I think Duke's been. I think Duke's been good since he went to Birmingham. Um, he's yeah. he's carried a lot. I think he's carried a lot of weight on his shoulders. Uh, Definitely really yeah. good last year. Him him and Adams last year were really good together. Yeah, really good. Um, I think losing Adams was a, a big loss, wasn't it? Um, yeah, but you know, I just look and I think just not got the same sort of personnel that I had in had in my my group you know where i don't i don't know how, i don't know how i'm trying to explain this i just think you need a bit more a bit more creativity a bit more in product yeah yeah, I still, yeah think, I, mean, I, think, I still think i still think it's a robust group that's hard to beat yeah. definitely but you you know you you need three or four with good end product and good creativity and can do things off the cuff you know yeah, yeah. I mean, it, the goals have obviously improved since Hogan's come in to partner Djokovic, and it's been much yeah. better since then. So, if he'd have started, at the, if he'd have signed for us last summer, God knows where we'd be now in the league. I mean, I don't know, but I think we'd be a few places higher, definitely. Yeah, 
I know, but look at that. That's that's a perfect example, isn't it? For someone to come in and get a goal a game for five games. Yeah. They're on like 40 odd grand a week. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, I know. It's, it's, mad, yeah. it's madness, isn't it? Where yeah. if you yeah. if you if you, rec- if you recruit well enough, you'll you'll get the, you'll get good you'll get some decent players that can come and score the goals on mm. in in the in the wage bracket you're working in. But you've you've got to make sure you recruit well enough. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Did you play in any local dives? Yeah, so I played in the um, obviously the ones we talked about, West Brom Wolves, yeah. etc. But the Villa. Played in the Villa one, the five five one away. That wasn't that wasn't a good that wasn't a good day to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> no. it, um, Gary, don't underestimate that, mate. It wasn't a good year. Yeah. No, no, it was, it was a it, it was a bad and it was a bad end. and but do you know what we I look back and I've, I've, that summer. I've seen it. I've seen it a few times. I've seen it a couple of times on um on Sky, you know, like the highlights of Derby's of the past and that and uh yeah. I looked at it and I thought that Villa team that I think that was I think that was the year they finished like fourth or third, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah. They were they were they were they were good they were a good team to be fair and we, we just we weren't at it at all. We weren't no. at it. All right, we'll forget that one then. <laughs> yeah. Craig Craig Courtney's asking, um, what advice would, would you give to Jude Bellingham in terms of moves? Um I think I think he's done the I think they've obviously done the right thing in terms of staying staying and, and getting getting all the games under his belt. Um yeah. it, it it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen, lads, and inevitably it's gonna happen. Yeah. When absolutely. when and when and where, who knows? But I think it will happen pretty soon and it might be a case where they, they might loan him back for for a year or something, you know what I mean? And and yeah. see how it goes. But I think he's I think he's decent. I mean, I watched that the win at Barnsley a couple of months back. Yeah. And he was in a poor, poor game. He was he was just the outstanding player on the night. You know, he's he's yeah. what I what I loved what I loved most was his work ethic. Just yeah. Oh yeah. Couldn't believe what I was couldn't believe what I was seeing from like sixteen year old yeah. lad where that that work ethic and putting a shift in like a like a man, do you know what I mean? And yeah, yeah. So was, the, the goal. Yeah. The goal come from him. The goal come from him chasing a fifty yard lost cause, you know, keeping yeah, it play. Yeah. 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 And I think that's the most important thing is that he plays, isn't it? Wherever he goes, whether he's loaned back or loaned somewhere else, you know, it's it's not gonna do his progression any good just playing in under twenty threes, is it, for a couple of years? You know, yeah, I mean I don't I, I don't think he will. I don't think he no. will. I think he's I think he's done enough to like wherever he goes. I think he's done enough to be taken serious, and he'll be part of a first team squad straight away. And he might not start straight away, depending on what club it is. It's going to be a top club. Yeah, I wouldn't just go. I wouldn't just go. I wouldn't just go to like a bottom half prem club. Do you know what I mean? No, if, no. If, he was going to, if he was going to leave Birmingham, I'd... what's your valuation of him then? Um, in the current in the current market, it, it, it's madness, isn't it? It is yeah. madness, but. You'd have to. I mean, for for what he's doing in the championship compared to other other players in the championship, Blues. I think Blues would probably have to ask for. I don't know, twenty million or something, wouldn't they? Mm-hmm. Do you reckon? And yeah. I think that's the bargain. That's well, it may maybe in may maybe in, in add-ons in a total package, you know. Mm. Yeah. If you look at if you look at the likes of Madison, he went he went. Um, he went to Norwich from Coventry for a couple of million. Mm. But then he went from Norwich to Leicester for 23 or something, didn't he? 22, 23. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, and I think, I think the, the market, it, the mar- well, before the COVID, obviously, the market had kicked, it jumped again, hadn't it? Mm. Yeah. So I think, I think for someone his, his age playing so consistent, that's a sign that he's going to go to the top and, He's got everything, think, hasn't he? He's got everything to get yeah. right to the very top and being even even an England legend, let alone a Blues legend. I mean, you know, he's certainly I think got for that. You, you've you've got to pay the money for that. You've got to pay the money, but club clubs will know now that under the circumstances at the minute, they could probably they could probably get him at a snip. You know, with with big add-ons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, lost off the pitch every game as well, which I respect, right? And he goes to every corner of the game and appreciates the fans because he's one of us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, you can see, it's, you can see, it's, I can't. I played a couple of charity games with his old man. You can see he's been bought. He's been bought well. You know what I mean? And he's, he's yeah. a respectful kid, and you know he's he's 
I, I'm, I just hope he has a really good career. Mm. We better get on to your. Um, just, sorry, just, just, sorry, be, just before just before well, we go to, just before just before we go to your one eleven, um, Gary. Uh, Craig says Gary has mentioned tenacity from the team he played in the team. Had a never say die attitude. What did Bruce say in the dressing room, or was it not needed? Um, I always said I always said like Bruce. He, he was good. He did. He come and done his bits in shape during training before the games and that couple of days. Eric Black took Eric Black took the majority of training and it was good sessions. Eric Black was top draw, a real good coach. But I always say Bruce earned his money at ten to three every week. It was honestly, it was like it would get the head, it would get goosebumps. You know what I mean? It was mm-hmm. it was all about the punters. It was all about making you making you happy and proud and you know go to work happy for the week. You know what I mean and like I say, that that season under Bruce that I had, it was ten to three. That the, the two or three minute team talk he had was, it was it was so good, so inspiring. It does make a difference because, like, I mean, I live an hour or so away from the from the ground, yeah, and and that drive back is either one of absolute elation or one of don't speak to me when I get home. <laughs> yeah. We know which one it's most of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's probably a good job I'm half deaf, isn't it, really? <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> one to 11. Well, off you go. Go on then. <clears throat> go on then, Gary. Uh, so my one, my one to 11 was tough. It was, it was a tough one. Um, I've gone with I've gone with Joe Art in goal, though, because obviously he's super. He's played, he's played, a, lot, played a lot of England games. He he had a bit of a dip for Blues at, at, at a period, but then he come back strong and, and finished the season really well. Um, Stephen Carr, right back. Uh, Raddy Jaidi, Matty Upson, centre backs, mm-hmm. um, and then it was again. It was a tough one at left back between Matt Sadler, who I had a great season with. He was he was brilliant behind me that year. We got we went up, but I think Frank Quidrew come in and training and everything. He was he was such a good player, like and such a yeah. top lad and such a great pro in the dressing room and great had a good career in the Premier League and that. So I went with Frank. Um, Two two centre mids. I've gone like a four two three one. I've gone um, yeah. Stephen Clement, Stephen Clements, and Barry Ferguson. Wow, that'd be both, good. Both quality. I think Barry Ferguson just just didn't give the ball away. Made Dif- different gravy, weren't he, Barry Ferguson? Yeah, he, he made. He was always. He was almost like a scrum half. He was always. <laughs> he was always onto a lo- always onto a loose ball. Yeah, but then but then always kept that first pass. No matter how no matter how much pressure he was under, and that's. People take that for granted, you know. But I, yeah. as a being a player, to, to have that calmness, to have that calmness wherever you play, and it, this it, this was even at Anfield and Old Trafford and that he was he didn't look out of place. He was so calm and kept that ball so simple and made it look easy. Yeah, Stephen Stephen Clements, obviously, I said he was just just around games. He was box to box. He was reliable. Yeah, his head where it hurt and, and just just a good leader. And he chipped in with five or six goals as well. I could score goals from midfield. And the three, then the three. I had Seb Larson on the right. Yeah, I think throughout my whole time there, Seb got better and better, no matter yeah. who the manager was. And then he yeah. went on to have a, he went on to have a cracking international career and uh, yeah. hundred caps, hundred caps. And then he had he had a really good Premier League career as well. Um, yeah, yeah, went, excellent player. On on the left of the three, I went with uh, Capo. Mm. Um, he was. Sometimes he flattered to deceive, but when he turned up, he was like, when he turned up, he was top draw. And sometimes in training, he was just so laid back and, and bothered, but his left foot was so lethal, you know, and he was such an athlete. He just, he just glided. I don't actually think, I think if he actually tried, he, you know, hundred <laughs> percent, he could have, he could have, he could have played for, for a top, you know, one of the top clubs in England, but yeah. Yeah. That goal at Chelsea that's... sticks in my mind. That was his debut. Yeah, it was, it? That's what I mean. Was... It was a, Great goal, but he just cruised. He just cruised it. I think he just cruised through it, and uh, he was really good. But and in the number ten role, I didn't play with him a lot, but I put David Dunn because he was the few games I did play with him. He was he was just like luxury on the ball. He was so yeah. good. Um, yeah, he, he seen he seen things. He seen things in training and that, and in some games that I, I was thinking, how how's he got out of that? You know, two or three players closing him down how he's wriggled himself out of that it was was top draw really and um, up front I went for 
it was a tough one really because I played with Benton and Jerome was good for Kev Phillips but up front I went with Four South because when I first went there Mikel had a he had an injury he got injured in one of yep. the early games started that season well I think he scored at Sunderland scored at Stoke yep. then he missed a pen somewhere but, but scored anyway got injured and uh but he was always such a good lad and like train uh done his rehab is is unbelievable like dedicated and professional but then when he got fit again for the next season showed his class you know in the prem he was he scored a hat trick he scored scored loads of goals and in training his finishing was just it was unreal like I, he used to do this finish where he used to scuff the ball like and it used to trickle in and it used yeah. to trickle in off the far and it used to go off the far post and in and un, We'd be doing these um, shooting drills and having a little bit of a wager on it or, a, a, you know, what, whatever, just for a bit of banter. And uh, you'd always be calling him like lucky and spawny, but he actually he actually practised that finish to a T because you you always just thought he scuffed it. But he didn't. Yeah. He, he, knew how, he knew how to scuff it. He knew what part of the foot to hit it off. The, yeah. goalkeepers, were, the goalkeepers were expecting a powerful finish, but, but it was more the, scu- the placement and it was always off the far post and in. And I thought... He was, it, honestly, it was, it was so, so good. I'd, I'd never seen that type of finishing really. And, uh, but yeah, I thought Mikel, Mikel was quality. Uh, there's yeah, a few missed, like draw. I say, a few, a few missed out. Mike Taylor was top goalie. Sads, Sads, like I said, Big Tiny was a good defender and Lee Bowie as well, midfielder. Lee, but yeah, yeah. That's my, that's my one to 11 really, I think. Cracking team. Yeah, really good team. And you mentioned four cell yeah. battery. That was against Tottenham, wasn't it? Yeah, it was in the four. Was it four nil? Four one? Four nil. Four one. I think they got a consolation, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a memorable game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah good game. Yeah. Nick. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was coming in. Sorry. No, mate. No. <laughs> oh, oh, go on, Nick. It's your turn. Oh, bugger off. Not this time. <laughs> bugger off. <then. laughs> that's that's um that's a team of leaders. That is, isn't it? Good out the message. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I dread, I dread just going back to four sell. I dread to think what it'd be worth in today's market. I mean, you're talking, you're talking sixty million up, ain't you? You got to be. Oh God. Plus, well, tell you, he, look, he done look it. At, he done it at the top level, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's done it at the top you're level. Amount of money. Mm. Go on, Nick. He's yeah. done it at the top. He done it. He done it at the top. And you look, look at the defenders. Like I say, when I was coming into the, when I was leaving Coventry, and I looked at the squad and. Jaidi had just scored in a World Cup. Matty Upson yeah. had scored in a World Cup. And yeah. uh, I'm looking, thinking, top, you know what I mean? Good good players. Mike Taylor played so many internationals. And David Dunn, Clements, just seasoned pros in the Prem. Four Salad done it at the top level at top club. So it was yeah, it, it was some, yeah. some group to come into. He was a Rolls Royce, wasn't he, Upson, at the back? He was just top quality. Yeah, like he was injured when I first come as well. But then... He, he got fit and he got in the team in about, uh, I think it was about November, maybe yeah. mid-November. Mm, and uh, yeah. he started ro- started rooming with me on away games and we'd just get chatting. And look, he wanted to he, 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 he wanted to get, be playing in the Prem. He wanted to leave. Someone had put a bid in and I think the club had turned it down, but it was the bid that matched what they promised him he could, he could leave for. Um, so basically, he, he kind of said, Look, if you, if, you, if you give me some good advice, if you ever want to get out of somewhere, you've just got to play your way out. You've got to do the business on the pitch. And I looked at that couple of months he played in that team. And as soon as he got on the team, he, scored, he started scoring from set plays. Yeah. Um, he was, his left foot was nice. He read the game well. Like you say, he was, he was a Rolls Royce. He was luxury. And he was, yeah. He, yeah. Play, he, play, he played his way out of a top of, the, top, of the, top of the table championship team to get back to the Prem. Yeah, and I think West Ham bought him for about seven million, didn't they? But yeah, yeah, yeah. That, couple, that yeah. couple of months he was playing, he was he was really really good. His experience yeah, yeah. shone from. Yeah, and, and another one that would be worth sixty million upwards in today's market, in my opinion. You know, mm, definitely. Yeah. yeah, we've had some cracking players over the years, haven't we? we have. Yeah, yeah. We've we've hung, yeah. we haven't hung on to many of them. <laughs> no. Well, look, it's twenty five past eight already. Yeah, well, we got we 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 started late, then we we didn't start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we got another three just, minutes or so. I'm just saying it. Look, 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 it just it just seems like we've been talking for five minutes. That's all. Yeah, yeah it flies goes by, quick, doesn't it? Uh, and it goes your, quick. Your, yeah, your, your clock's wrong, by the way, Nick. <laughs> it, it's not my clock. It's hers. Oh, it's wrong. 
It's actually the... 2034. It's what, sorry? Twenty, Nearly 25 to. Right, yeah, so, so, of course so I'm looking Gary, at what it. Are the, um, <laughs> Gary, what, are the aspirations, what are the aspirations for the future now? Are you, you hoping to get into management one day? Um. Listen, I, I started the coaching. I'd done the badges and that. Not really because I was looking to be a manager or anything. It was just about start coaching, dip, dip my toe in, see if I enjoy it and, you know, give a bit back to the youngsters, developing them and that. And uh, that's still the same. That's It's still the same. I'm ha- happy with the age that I work with, the role and that. And no, in, I'm in no rush whatsoever to, like, manage you know i'd rather i'd rather earn the stripes if you like and okay. get the experience and so you haven't got you, you haven't got a dream job then lined up what would be your dream job gary come on be honest you can say coventry if you like dream job probably <laughs> getting like probably getting blues or coventry back to the premier league one day, oh. yeah. <laughs> yes please <laughs> blues or coventry sorry blues or coventry yeah either or yeah. mate yeah either yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. So very diplomatic Tri- there you said the right thing Excuse. <laughs> Choose. Choose. It's one or the other. On or both. <laughs> He's not going to say anything. <laughs> we don't have for him as well tonight. <laughs> uh, Adam Wilkes, uh, sorry, friend of the show as well, one of our team. He's asking, um, Adam Wilkes is asking you, do you get a chance to play FIFA? I don't play, uh, I don't play FIFA. I don't play like computer games like that in years, man. Honestly, I've since. No. Too many kids. Too many I think kids. Super mate. Mario was my last game I played. Yeah, crikey, <laughs> the original yeah. one. Yeah, Mario. Yeah, Kart I, I, I like, I'm, I'm, I must admit, I like a game of FIFA myself. I'm a gamer, um, and I must say, if I was on it at any time in my life as a professional footballer, I probably would never put it. I'd still be playing it now. I'd still be playing like FIFA 07 or something if I was you, like you know. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit harsh. <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> but it was when it, it was FIFA 07. You would have been on, wouldn't it, for us? I don't, I, Never, I don't think I was playing it back then, to be honest, but yeah. Would have been 07, 08, probably 09, something like that, yeah. yeah that's I remember. Odd you know. player. Hey? Don't you, Chris? Sorry? I remember Sabutio. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, yeah, but yeah. Knocking the heads off the Villa, plot, Villa ones, yeah. yeah. That's great, yeah, wasn't funny. it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Um, Mike, Mark Hill says, interesting comment from Mark Roberts recently regarding games to be owned played behind closed doors will be dull with no home fans. What does Gary think? Um, in in general, or yeah, Mark Robbins behind closed doors with no fans. I mean, what, what do you think? Yeah, it's, look, it's, it's it's not ideal, is it? It's not ideal, but if it's if it's if it's what it's got to take to get things back up and running, just got to roll with it and and hope that hope that it can. The fans can get back in as soon as possible, but the only way they're gonna the only way they're gonna get back in is if you dip if you dip your toe in and try it out and 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 hopefully as time goes by it's safer to it's safer to get them back in and mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. I'm sure I'm sure I'd be chomping at the bit and I'll tell you what though it, it does it don't half give you your hunger back, doesn't it? Gives you some hunger back to get you know get into a football ground again and watch football. Oh god! Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, as a, as a fan watching it, the best analogy I came up with after watching the German football was it's like watching Strictly Come Dancing without the music. <laughs> <laughs> I've never watched hear, it. Never watched it. I, I don't mind it though, because like you can hear, like I say, the ball's in play more. You, you technically you can hear the ball slapping about, you know, the yeah, yeah, you can almost see it. You can hear the players talking, obviously, you don't know their language, but um. So when it'd be interesting when the English games come back on on yeah. TV and you can you can hear them, you can hear what's going on, you can hear what's being said and the information being passed about because you know it's it's decent. I can't, I can't wait to just start watching it again. We won't be able to get away with doing this anymore. I hate that. I can't stand that ball. No. That and spitting. Right, I'm just going to talk to you about spitting. Right, with COVID nineteen going on, have there any been any guidelines reference to players um, doing that kind of action? Because it's the one thing I just detest. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I don't know. I mean, I'm sitting here furloughed from Doncaster, so I've been here a couple of months just just, uh, just chilling, really, with family time. And um, mm-hmm. not really, not really, I watch, I listen and watch watch the news and watch Sky Sports really as much as used to keep in the loop. And uh, mm-hmm. got no real, I don't know if they have any guidelines on that, but I'm pretty sure that 
there won't be any sort of intentional spitting aimed at any in, in the direction of players. I'd hope not anyway. No, no, no. no. It's, it's just, mean, it's one thing that proper grates me about football. Like you watch it on the TV and then they say pan to play and woof. Oh no, please don't do that. There's no need. I mean, it's uh, difficult. Uh, it uh, is uh, difficult though because your mouth fills up with saliva. Yeah. So well, then. You, if you keep swallowing it, you'll, you don't know, you'll, 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 you'll eat yourself. Explode. <laughs> I understand it a bit more with players, but managers. I've even seen managers spitting as well. And what, why? Like, why do they have to spit, managers? I think it. I think it's. I think they must get some sort of like nervous tension, and you know, it might be a. It might be an action that. It might be an action that you tend to do when you. You get a bit tensed and nervous. I don't know. Well, the Gary, there's, no, there's nobody more chewing, tense. Chewing gum. Nervous. Chewing, nobody chewing gum, aren't they? More nervous supporters standing watching, right? And we don't spit at each other. <laughs> That's true. Because yeah. 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 you ain't got grass. You ain't got grass below you to spit, to spit on. <laughs> we did at Wigan once. <laughs> <laughs> Quality. How are we doing for time, Mrs. Brown? We're done. We're about We're done. done. Okay, We're done. there's something that I, didn't, that I didn't read out earlier on, uh, that I should have done, and I'm very, 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 very genuinely sorry for this. And this is uh, regarding the story, um, sadly, this week about uh, Christian Mabulu, I think his name was. And uh, uh, the former Millwall and crew Alexander Mann was found at his house by police this afternoon and tributes have been pouring in online. The death is not being treated as suspicious after he was discovered at the address in Cotton near Preston in Lancashire. Lancashire police say we were called around 1.30pm today, May the 26th, to an address on Greenfinch Avenue, Cotton, to reports of a sudden death. We attended and sadly found the body of a man aged in his 20s. There are not enough... Uh, there, there are thought... There are not thought to be any suspicious circumstances surrounding his death and a fire will be passed to the coroner in due course. Our thoughts are very much with his family and friends at this sad time. Babulo emerged with Essex side Brentwood Town before spending time at Millwall and Motherwell before joining the Shrimps early this year and crew released him in January. He played three times for the League Two side this season. Morecambe tweeted to confirm the news and said everybody at Morecambe FC is deeply saddened to learn of Christian Malubu's, Mabulu's death and would like to extend our deepest sympathies to his family and friends at this very sad time. Millwall also paid tribute and wrote everyone at Millwall Football Club is devastated to learn of the tragic passing of former player Christian Mabulu at the age of just 23. Our heart went to his family and friends and immediately uh, at this immensely difficult time. Crew tweeted horrendous news that our former defender Christian Mabulu has passed away at the age of just 23. No age. Mr. People, we say this every week and we say it every week and we mean <clears> it. <throat> it's okay not to be okay. Talk to somebody, talk to anybody. You can talk to us, you can talk to each other. We are a family. We're Birmingham City. We stick together. We stick together like glue. And if one of you is feeling down, do not, do not, do not hold it in. Don't hold it in, because that's the worst thing you can do. Talk to somebody. It's okay. It's it, it's easy to talk. It's easier to talk than to potentially take your own life under awful, awful, awful circumstances at 23 years old. Tragic. Very. It is. It is tragic. Tragic. Sorry, sorry, I didn't read that at the, at the front end of the show. You know what my name is like. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this so has been the one, talk with one, one very quick, one very quick last question. Go on, quick. Gary, on, quick, the, quick. Ga, 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 Gary, what was the Gary, Gary? What was the best atmosphere you ever played in? The best atmosphere. Yeah. Um. Probably. Probably like um, Coventry and Blues days. Coventry back at Highfield Road. You know that 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 type of stadium, isn't it? Yeah. St Andrews. Yeah. That. An old stadium, just, just that kind of like updated old school stadium. Um, mm. the, the, the atmospheres were, were, were unbelievable. Um, probably, probably them, yeah, them two grounds, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Thanks for your time, mate. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Well, no, thank you. It's, it's, it's talking to great. You. Right, thanks, in. And thanks for the memories, thanks for the good memories of that promotion season and the Premier League stuff as well. Nick, nah, it's been great, lads. Thanks very much. Nick. Ladies and gents, this has been the Talk Talk Show. Monday night, we'll be back here at 7.30 next week. The guest list is... Next week, we've got Liam Daish, and then Robbie Savage, Darren Carter, and then Darren Purse. Good luck. What a line. And, of course, kicking off that lineup for this month is yourself, Gary McSheffrey. Thank you ever so much for everything you did for our football club. 
for all the memories, for all the times we went home happy, for, even for all the times we went home sad. <laughs> but Epre, a legend. Ladies and gentlemen, thank right. you all hip kiss. Thank you very much. Good night all. Thank you so, so, so very much, Gary McSheffrey, for giving your time up. Thank you. Appreciate it. Because what we do, we would it's normally nice. be on spectacle this time of the year, but we decided to carry on all through the summer so we can keep in touch with the supporters and keep the supporters together. And like I said a few moments ago about talking to each other, it's really, really, really important. Things are difficult, times are hard, uh, and it's really, really, really bob on that we just keep in touch Definitely. with not only their vulnerable supporters, and our disabled supporters who are absolutely beautiful, but every single Birmingham City fan out there. Gary McSheffrey, you're a legend. Thank you very, very much indeed. Mrs Brown. I was going to say you haven't thanked me yet. <laughs> 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 Gary, thank you a million times over, my friend. Bless you. Thanks Good very night, much. All. Cheers, guys. Thanks for having me. Stay safe. We'll come Good out the other side. We'll keep right on to the end of the road. Good night. I've been speaking that all day. <laughs> Good night all. Good night See all. you guys. See you later. Bring it all around. Now all you blue boys know what we mean. We are the lads from the Chilton.